Hello everybody and welcome to Fintech Futures. We are here at day two of Money 2020 in Amsterdam. My name is Tyler Page. I'm a reporter for Fintech Futures. And today I'm really, really excited to be joined by Mitch Trahan. Mitch, how are you? I'm good, thanks everyone. I'm Mitch Trahan. I am the Chief Compliance Officer at Alaka Bank. Alaka Bank is focused on established businesses in the UK market. We provide lending, business current accounts and saving accounts with a hyper focus on that client base. That's really fantastic. Well, thank you for that introduction, Midge. Um, I, I understand that it's a very exciting time for you to be here at, uh, at Money 2020 this year in, here in Amsterdam. You've got a panel session I coming do. up uh, tomorrow afternoon, That's which right. will be very, very interesting. Can you give us a little bit of a, a sneak peek into what we can expect? Can't give too much away, but no, the no. panel, I'm moderating a panel on meritocracy and what's actually happening with meritocracy across the financial services industry today. Focus on, focusing on also, you know, what's happening with diversity. How do people that speak up and speak up a lot louder and confidently getting noticed versus maybe members of a team that aren't as outspoken but are great performers? And how do we ensure that everyone is recognized appropriately and tackling unconscious bias that leaders may have? So the panel surrounding all of those aspects and what to look for and how to address that to the best for everybody at large. That sounds really, really interesting. I think it taps into a lot of uh, key ideas that are circulating here today at the conference yes. uh, and brings them onto the stage. So it'd be really, really exciting to see that. And I'm, I, I, I'm sure I'll be there in attendance. So really looking forward to seeing you there. Really, really good. Well, Alaka Bank, it's an interesting time to be Chief Compliance Officer at Alaka Bank. Um, in April, it reported its first full year of profitability. Fantastic achievement, well done. What do you think were the key drivers of the bank's 141% climb in revenues? I think, genuinely, I don't believe there's any real secret sauce here, right? We've got our client base has been historically underserved. The big banks have focused on the big, large corporates. Those new challenger banks have focused on the individuals and the consumers. And you've got this big section of society, these established businesses, a third of UK GDP that have just been underserved. So if you focus specifically on an underserved market with clear focus on objectives and delivery, everything just kind of then falls into place. Mm. And that, that, that's, a, that's a route that you've, you've followed quite clearly and, and it's paid off, which is really fantastic. So well done on that achievement. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very exciting time in terms of your role as, as Chief Compliance Officer. How does Alec, uh, Alica Bank balance its risk appetite with its uh, compliance requirements? Okay, no problem. So the compliance requirements matching into that risk appetite kind of falls into place on its own for a lot of it. Given our client base, it is that SME market or established businesses. That means that speaks a lot of itself on what the risk appetite should be. We don't do other financial institutions on a correspondent banking and downstream payments and all of that area. So all of that's outside of appetite because that's not our client base. We're also extremely transparent about what our risk appetite is. It's available on our website for everyone to see. And at the core root of Alaka Bank is a societal purpose. So a lot of our risk appetite, a lot of what we will do and won't do it's all about what is good for society and driving that societal purpose through, which again, is all transparently documented on our website. That's, that's really, really interesting um, to talk about that sort of societal purpose. It taps into a lot of what we're seeing in, in the UK at the moment, for right. example. I mean, I know we're, we're, in, we're not in the UK at the moment, but to, talking about- I feel like back, we are sometimes. Maybe sometimes, maybe we are, maybe <laughs> we mean, never left. Everyone here is from the UK, but well, a lot of people anyway. Yeah, I know, I've, I've noticed that. Yeah. Um, well, it's a major financial hub, isn't it? Still but is, we, yeah. we see things with the FCA for consumer duty, you know, meeting consumers where they are in, in Alica Banks, in Alica Banks, for instance, it's SMEs, but it's really, really good to hear that you have that practice and those sort of beliefs in, in play, right. you know, so, I've, I've witnessed a lot happening at Alica Bank before it reported its, its profitability right. in, in April. You know, you've formed partnerships with Wise Platform, for example, yes, we have. with uh, Clear Bank, who are here somewhere. They are. I think they're both here, in fact. Right. Um, how do you then manage that sort of like compliance requirements and, and the, the opportunity for risk to arise when partnering with those, with those FinTech providers? Of course, no problem. Um, 
So the key attributes with both Wise and ClearBank, for example, is they're supporting us with providing our products and services to our underlying customer base. Mm -hmm. So the key part of all of that, and I know I mentioned it before with our website and the transparency of the risk appetite that way, but it also happens with our partners. That need for that open communication, understanding their risk appetites, what they will help us process, what they won't help us process, what we want to do with our societal purpose, and mapping all of that together is really how we address those compliance requirements. So we've got specific teams internally that manage those clear bank relationships and the wise relationships, and that feeds then through into our compliance procedures and processes to ensure that all of those multifaceted pieces of requirements go all the way through in a seamless way, making the end user experience yeah. clean and straight. Yeah. That's a, that's a really interesting point because when you think of compliance and you know abiding by finances, many regulations, there's, there's too many to count in this video, unfortunately. Um, but you know there, there is that risk of like being compliant in a regulatory manner mm -hmm. and then having that sort of level of innovation to serve in your instance SMEs. With, with profits now rolling in, and I believe 385 million pounds in financial backing, which is astonishing, it's amazing, congratulations. But how is Alica Bank ensuring that balance between being compliant and being innovative? So it's a really, really good point as well. That, that's also really maps back to what I was saying at the start about that focus on our established business market, who have typically been underserved. And one of the key areas there is that onboarding process and procedure. And what Alec is doing differently here is, it's very much a handheld process. It's not just fill in a form and you disappear into the ethos. Our clients are given a relationship director. And that hand-holding is part of that onboarding process with our onboarding teams as well. It means that our ability to comply with those onboarding procedures, the identification and verification requirements, the nature of the business of our customers, it all quite happens quite seamlessly and naturally through the engagement model. So if you think about the user experience, you've got a user experience that's engaging, mm -hmm. not just a fill in a form and we'll never speak with you. You've got that dedicated piece. And when you start overlaying that with compliance requirements, it actually becomes quite easy to put that in. Then you start taking in, you know, we are here at Money 2020, many reg tech providers, oh, identification yeah. and verification providers, <laughs> PEPS sanctions and electronic checking providers, ways of making the risk assessment of the customer in an automated fashion. You start overlaying and putting that all into the procedure and processes, you can get a really unique compliant process that still works from a user experience. That's really fascinating. Like, I, I think, you know, when you when you talked about this sort of community focus, yes. in, in, in your initial aspect, what you've just said then about pairing your clients with somebody from the bank is yeah. like really doubling down on that. And like, you're not just talking the talk, you're walking the walk in that instance. Of course. Banking and financial services at large is one of the most heavily regulated Very industries in the world. Uh, you can't do you can't do anything without the that's why I've got a job. That's why you got a job. <laughs> um, I'm sure it keeps the, the regulators very, very busy. From your standpoint, then, yeah. uh, what do you think the, the major compliance hurdles are going to be in the next two to five years? And importantly, how is Alica Bank preparing for them? OK, so I'll start with the end of the question. How are we preparing for them? Yeah. You can't prepare for anything unless you've identified what's coming along the horizon and what's actually coming up. So let me go down that road and talk about that. I think there's a few key parts that everyone in the industry needs to be aware of. First one's going to be authorised push payment fraud. That's coming in later this year and how the industry is preparing for that. The next part's going to be cyber. The world is becoming a more and more tech focused place. So while all firms are being cyber resilient, making sure you're not just leaving that aside and saying, oh, we've done what we need to there. It's like brushing your teeth. You don't do it once and then never do it again. You have to constantly keep rechecking and being there and make sure it's appropriate and correct. Mm -hmm. So I think cyber is going to be a longer term focus for everyone across the industry. Mm -hmm. The next part is going to be resources and hiring, right? As firms such as Alica and anybody that's growing rapidly as we are, you need to keep growing and bringing in the right compliance resource. But finding that compliance resource with that type of growth it's very, very interesting. You think about what the big banks have done. They've siloed all of their compliance teams and departments and people have a unique, small specialism and focus. And then the smaller players have got that wider 
generalist type population of employment, employment and compliance staff. What you need then to start doing is getting people that are specialists with a generalist view. And that's right. going to be a challenge for a lot of people, particularly as when we come to the last part of what's happening, more regulation coming down the path. And for me, it'll be really interesting seeing what, if there's a change of government, mm -hmm. what comes with that when it comes to financial services and regulation. And in, in terms of that talent and those people with those, that know-how, how has it been to find those people, to source those people? Do you think that it's going to be a challenge to, to overcome that hurdle? Or do you think that there are people with that knowledge who are actively in banking right now? I think there are definitely people in the market with that appropriate skill set and knowledge and the years under their belt. Um, the next part is just finding, right? Finding those individuals. There are a lot of people out there. I'm currently hiring and expanding the team. Uh, and I'm up for the challenge. I want to, I enjoy working with people and bringing new talent through and coaching them up to the next levels and mentoring that. Well, Mitch, it's been fantastic to speak to you. Hopefully, you. next time that we meet at, at next year's Money 2020 or sooner, you can, uh, you can tell me all about how that journey has gone and how uh, Alica Bank has, has progressed on his great financial performance. I would absolutely love to speak with you again about that. I'll see you next year. Well, thank you very much, thank Mitch, so for much. joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody, who has joined us online for this conversation. If you'd like to find out more about Alica Bank, Money 2020 Europe, or any more about the uh, compliance issues that are facing the industry at large, please visit our website at fintechfutures.com. Until then, I'll see you next time and goodbye.